Today we're going to be building a tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses shield for an Arduino. The game board is made up of a series of RGB LEDs which lights up green or blue to indicate the knots and crosses. A keypad at the bottom of the shield that corresponds to the game board positions allows you to input each move. A status LED shows you which player's turn it is and allows you to select one of the three game modes using the keypad and the start button alongside it. The game has three selectable game modes, one which allows you to play against another person, one which allows you to play against an easy level AR, and one which allows you to play against an expert AR, which is impossible to beat. The best you can hope for is a draw. The AR works on a minimax algorithm, which is a recursive algorithm aimed at minimizing the possible loss for a worst case scenario. The algorithm works by calculating the value of each state of the game by looking at all possible outcomes following each move. A move that results in the AR winning is given a score of 10, and one which results in the opponent winning is given a score of minus 10. A state which results in a draw is given 0. The AR then plays the move that it calculates to be the best at reducing the possibility of the opponent winning. It's an old algorithm which has been around since the early 1900s, and can be applied to many two-player turn-based games. It's commonly used in computer-based chess games. With the AR running the Minimax algorithm on the Arduino, it'll always play the best possible move, regardless of who starts, so you won't be able to beat it. To make the game a bit more fun, as it's not much fun losing or drawing all the time, I've added a second mode which plays random moves for the first two plays before allowing the AR to finish off the game. This drastically reduces the AR's ability to win, and you're left with the possibility of winning most games that you start, and a fair number of games that the AR starts. Lastly, I've included a two-player mode which allows you to play against a friend, and the Arduino will keep track of the turns and highlight the winning lines. Now that you know how it works, let's have a look at how to make one. There are ways to use addressable LEDs to condense the I.O. to fit onto an Arduino Uno, but I already had a bunch of these RGB LEDs and an Arduino Mega lying around, so that's what I used for this project. The shield makes use of 21 digital outputs for the LEDs, and 10 digital inputs for the push buttons. I sketched the circuit in Easy EDA, and then designed a PCB as a shield which clips onto the Arduino Mega. Each push button has a corresponding 10 to 20k resistor, and each LED has a 220 to 500 ohm resistor in series with it. I used slightly higher resistors for the green legs of the LEDs, as I find that these are usually brighter than the blue and red legs. I didn't connect the red legs of the LEDs on the game board, as you only need to indicate two states for each position. I got these PCBs made up by PCBWay, I'll leave a link to them in the video description. Once the PCBs arrived, I got to assembling them. I used 15k resistors for the switches. I also used 390 ohm resistors for the blue and red LEDs, and 470 ohm resistors for the green LEDs. I added some header strips to plug into all of the pins in the Arduino, so that the shield is held in place firmly. With the PCB done, we can get started with the programming. I started out by getting the game board set up in a 3x3 array. I then added some logic to get the two-player mode working. This allowed alternating green and blue inputs until the board was full or one player had one across one of the rows, columns or two diagonals. Once this game mode was working, I got started on the AI's Minimax algorithm. If you've ever used this algorithm before, then you'll probably know that it's not the easiest thing to debug. It took me a couple of hours to get working before it started producing meaningful results. I also had to add some simple logic to the first AR move in order to reduce the first move's processing time. The Arduino, being a relatively slow computer, was taking a significant amount of time to work through all 255,000 possible game outcomes. The AR now essentially plays a corner as its first move, unless it goes second and the human player has already played a corner, in which case it plays the center position. 
This logic reduces the number of gameplays to a couple of thousand, which the Arduino has no problem calculating in a few milliseconds. Once the hour player was working, I added a final game mode which just uses a random board position for the first two moves, and then allows the AI to take over. This results in a game which you can quite easily win if you play first, and allows the AI to occasionally win if you go first and make a silly mistake. You could add a fourth mode which only randomly places the first AI move. This would increase the difficulty quite a lot, but would still allow you some chance of winning if the AI got unlucky. I then added the start animation and code to highlight or flash the winning lines, and the project was then complete. You can now select a game mode when the Arduino is powered up. Once in this game mode, the Arduino stays in this mode and just keeps refreshing the game board after each play, so that you can keep playing until you reset it again. Once a game mode is selected, the status LED indicates which player's turn it is. This is randomly generated for each game, so that you don't always have one player starting. You can then play out your game and the Arduino highlights a winning line once it is reached, or flashes the whole game board if it is a draw. Let me know what you think of the game and what you'd do differently in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.